Hi, my name is Nick Kaiser and I'm a behavioral disease ecologist and I study animal parasite interactions. And this is pop culture debunker, The Last of Us. Action. I've liked zombie movies far before I actually studied parasites and zombie making fungi. Even as a young biologist, like it's very inspiring to see you know, the things that you're interested in on a TV screen or on a movie screen and thinking like, oh, these types of things we study in nature can actually happen. The more you learn, the more you realize that that's not actually true, but it's still very fun to see these things being portrayed on TV. Replacing the ant's flesh with its own, but it doesn't let its victim well, die. All parasites devour their hosts. That's how they, how they grow. They have to take the resources from their host. But Ophiocordyceps, the fungus that infect ants, uh, actually doesn't really take a lot of the resources until the host is already dead. I think it's a little bit preposterous to propose that you would only need a single mutation for a fungus that's been co-evolving with ants for millions of years to all of a sudden jump into mammals. Sure, there are billions of humans on the planet, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of insects for every human. So if they already have all these hosts available, why would Ophiocordyceps jump into a human all of a sudden? So I think it's important to know as we're going forth that Cordyceps cannot infect people, period. Yes, that is rad, but I don't think it totally makes sense because when fungal pathogens, especially of insects like Ophiocordyceps that they're using in this show, is being transmitted among hosts, it's transmitted via wind dispersal. So sure, they control the bodies and potentially the minds of their host to move into a place in the environment that benefits its own transmission, but really the transmission happens on the wind or maybe a droplet of rain hits the host and splashes spores everywhere. It doesn't really need the host to become super aggressive and start biting other individuals. And fungi do not move like that, <laughs> but that is awesome. And yeah, that's pretty brutal. So it's true, we do not have vaccines for any fungal pathogens. Um, we do have some medicines that can treat them, of course. The mycologist in this show is recommending essentially culling or neighborhood culling, which is like one of the most extreme versions of sort of pandemic response preparedness because she's essentially saying we need to kill all of the uh, healthy individuals around this, what is it, one or two infected people in this town to potentially uh, stop the spread, which is something that has been done for agricultural uh, diseases, but of course has never been done in a human disease. And I think it's a little extreme to suggest it after two people have been infected. So Ellie is gazing out upon this like pile of corpses and they're all collectively reacting to the sunlight as it shines over them. And that's actually kind of cool because Ophiocordyceps, one of the ways in which we think that it manipulates the behavior of the ant is by manipulating its circadian rhythm. So potentially the way that it's like interacting with light signals. The fungus also grows underground. That is sort of based on a real concept, right? Like a lot of fungi have these like underground networks that can be super, super complicated. In fact, like in forest, they call these like mycorrhizal networks. So not only are fungi communicating with each other, but they can also communicate with the root systems of trees. And these can be huge. Like there's one in Oregon that's like 2000 acres. Like it's like a giant, giant, giant thing. But the idea that you could step on a fungus and all of a sudden somewhere a mile away, the fungus knows, like I don't think there's any communication mechanism that would be able to run that quickly. So the zombie seems to be like, he's like being led by the fungus inside his mouth. It's like reaching out like little tendrils or tentacles and kisses Tess, presumably to transmit the pathogen to her, which is very gross but doesn't make sense. So fungal pathogens, again, are transmitted via spores. So there's no real reason for a host, an infected host to get that close to an uninfected host to transmit it because you could just use the wind and infect so many other hosts. But that is pretty gnarly. So Ellie just found out that her new friend is infected. He's been bitten, but reveals her scars demonstrating that she has been bitten previously, but has not become infected. She writes to him that her blood is medicine, which is a very cool line, but probably is not gonna work. 
Yeah, so she cut an open wound in her hand and rubbed it onto the open wound of her friend, which is very kind, but uh, I don't think any epidemiologist would recommend such behavior. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the idea that you can have like a cure in your blood doesn't really make sense. Like we can, there can be some immune boosting properties that you can get from individuals serum that you could get from a blood sample, but um, that's not really something that you would treat an individual after they've already been infected, especially for fungal pathogens. You know, we really don't know much of how the human adaptive immune system responds to fungi. Most of the way that we protect ourselves from fungal infection is in the innate immune system, our sort of first physiological defenses against disease. Um, so that already doesn't really make sense. But we don't, we, like I said, we don't really know how we defend, how we would best defend ourselves against a fungal pathogen. One really cool example is uh, there are frogs that can defend themselves from fungal infection, but it's not their own immune system that does it. It's bacteria that lives in the mucus on their skin that produces antifungal compounds that sort of protects them. Uh, presumably that's not what's happening here, but uh, I thought, you know, it's a nice gesture. I would give The Last of Us show a realistic rating of three. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching Pop Culture Debunker. Yeah. What should we react to next? Is the host still conscious during this type of a fungal infection? Or is it known if the host is still conscious? It, um... It is not known whether a host ant would be conscious during this infection, but it is also not yet known whether ants are conscious. <laughs> Maybe that's not the best way to put that.